So we're here. It's a you know it's lunchtime here at the expo, uh, Tom. Uh, but you're not eating. You're just sitting here talking with me. What do you have to say? Yeah, well, you know, uh, here's see, check things out. So I'm not ready to eat lunch yet. Not no. ready to eat lunch. No, no. So, so let everybody else go through so that way I can take whatever I want. I feel, <laughs> and I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> well, I think there's plenty over there for us to get it, a little later. It, it looked like it. So Tom, your assistant superintendent, it says. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. How long? Uh, in this position, five years. Been with the district, 21 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you've seen a lot come and go. Seen a lot come and go. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, with, with all your tender there, I, uh, I'm, I'm curious, what's been the challenge through all of that? Uh, well, I always say the challenge that we have every day is customer service. Uh, it's dealing with people. You know, people are people, no matter where you're from. Yeah. It's dealing with people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Stuff, stuff, no matter whether you're in Missouri or you're in Florida, <laughs> stuff is stuff, but it's people that make the difference. Yeah, you know, people say, oh, you don't understand. It's, it's always different somewhere else, but it isn't. It isn't. People are people. Right. That's right. You know, you would have enjoyed my rock star program. It's all about the nine personalities of a rock star custodian. And I was talking about the personalities, not what we do, but dealing with people. Sure. Who they are. Are they good employees or bad employees, right? Because those are the same no matter where they are. Okay, right. and, and as assistant superintendent, you get to deal with uh, the staff, the working staff, yes, the students, the faculty, and then let's throw all of the parents in there too. Exactly right. Yeah, and they're all people, right? Yep. So it's all about relationships, it's all about communication. And you're still smiling, Tom. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why are you here? Uh, check things out. Um, I, this is one of those conferences we come to every other year. Uh, this year, I have to be on an off year, uh, but part of a presentation. Um, our school district is one of the first school districts in the state of Missouri to build with uh, insulated concrete forms, or ICF. Oh, okay. uh, We're the first school district in Missouri to build classrooms with it. And so that's what brought me here today was to be uh, at the uh, presentation at 310 uh, with Navigate uh, Construction, who is our owner's rep uh, for the construction project. So uh, I came to represent our school district and, and hopefully uh, meet and greet and, and uh, bring some people out to our district and show them what uh, we've got going on at Fair Island. Okay, so this is going to be on the MSPA site uh, for everybody to look at for a long time. So let's explain to them what is ICF. Yeah. Yeah, so insulated concrete form. It's basically two pieces of styrofoam and you fill it with concrete in the middle to build your structure. So we're not talking the floors, we're talking we're the structure. We're talking the structure itself, yeah. Supporting walls, exterior walls, interior walls. So uh, why would we do that? Well, for us, it was about our gymnasium. So we were wanting to build a storm shelter. Okay. And you really have a couple options, All and right. that's really it to make it safe. Okay. And one of those was ICF. Uh, in our review and research, it was a little cheaper to build with ICF and much faster. There was no turnaround time waiting on precast uh, panels because concrete's something that's sourced locally. Right. And so as long as you can get the styrofoam blocks, which are coming out of Nixon, Missouri for us, uh -huh. uh, so they were close, local, and uh, then putting our local uh, workforce to work. In building these walls, oh, man, this is a sustainable yeah. project. It is, it is. So, and in addition to that, it's one of those things that there's also return. Okay. Uh, there's a uh, thirty to fifty percent savings in heating and cooling because it's insulated and it's concrete, so it has thermal mass. So it's very uh, secure. Um, doesn't uh, allow air to penetrate. Uh, so it's pretty sound. Uh, so it's very efficient. Uh, it's one piece of concrete all the way up. Uh, they just keep four full four feet lifts all the way around the building with a pump truck. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now, you know what? If I'm a listener, just the general public listening to this, I'm thinking, wait a minute. You're building a storm place for me to go with foam? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what you have to realize, though, is those walls are 12 inches thick of concrete uh -huh. to make it a storm shelter. There so you go. I'll tell you what. I, I'm amazed. You think of this flimsy styrofoam block right, right. Right with plastic yeah. between them, right? Right. Uh, until you put the concrete in it. And now you walk through that building. It's so quiet. It's sound. It's solid. I mean, you just know immediately when you see it, you touch it, feel it. That styrofoam has become so solid. Uh, so, then, so then it's a general basic concrete foundation. It is. Same type of footer. Okay. Uh, it would be very similar to uh, CMU construction where you have rebar that's poking out of the footer to attach to. Uh, then within the styrofoam, of course, you have rebar that's set to hold the concrete in place and provide uh, the structural uh, needs to support the concrete, the wall. Uh, so there is some rebar work involved. It's not just put the forms up for concrete, uh, you know, so you are connecting and making those connections with, you know, rebar. 
and wire ties. So I, I'm thinking that if you did something this unique, you had to put on some kind of a different roof that goes along with this. Well, and, and what about thermal pane windows? And yeah, yeah, I'm thinking all kinds of things. Here. So, so actually, it's all the same. Uh, the roofing is the same structure you would with precast. Okay. Uh, windows are really no different other than the thickness of the wall you're dealing with. Well, it's now not that, a window. Yeah. It's still the same kind of windows. We're used, actually using our local window contractor in town. So I'm uh, thinking a window seal is the 12-inch window seal on the inside or outside? We push it to the outside, of course, to make it look nice. Uh, so you have a longer window. You'll have a bigger window sill on the inside, okay. right? Everybody likes to put stuff in a window. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, no, I, can, yeah. I can just see a teacher just loading <laughs> the window sill up. I'm, I'm thinking uh, a good place for a terrarium. You got it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So wow. I, I, I See, and this is the reason we do a podcast, folks, because you never know what somebody's going to sit down here and talk to you about. That was never on my agenda. Yes. I thought you'd hit me with something there. <laughs> Well, we'd love to have everybody come out and look at it. Uh, we'd love people to tour. Uh, we've been working with Fox Blocks, who provided us the styrofoam blocks uh, and the uh, concrete council uh, for the project to show it off because we're being the first school in Missouri, it's something new, right? Uh, so we, how, how long ago did you do this, Tom? Uh, we're still under construction oh, really? uh, to be completed in November, beginning of December. We'll take possession in December. Oh, so we'll cool. move in in January. Kids will start attending their uh, eight classrooms. Uh, yeah, in December, we're re adding on to a current elementary building. I was going to say, yeah. is this a standalone? or it So is this is an addition to? It is, yeah. So the original building was built back in the 1970s as a 30-year structure. It was a temporary structure that <laughs> was put up. Now that it's been 50 years, uh, <laughs> yeah. and poured on a slab, so we're, the pipes are rotting off in the ground and those kind of things. So right. we've got to make stages here to improve right. the building. Yeah, otherwise we're going to lose it. So so how did you figure out, how did you come about this? I mean, I'm kind of curious here. Yeah, so great question. So original with the architects, it was a typical built building yeah, for right. Missouri, you know, stick and concrete block. Uh, and then we hired a new uh, chief financial officer who's familiar with ICM. Uh -huh. And he's like, hey, I know we've got this project going on, but have you guys considered this? And our architects were willing to take on the challenge. And so in taking on that challenge, then uh, we made the switch. Uh, prior to going to final design, we changed the construction method. So this is so, new for the uh, contractor, contractor as well. For sure. Well, the contractor actually had used it before. That was okay. why we had. But the architect had. The architect had not. The architect had not <laughs> used it. So uh, we took uh, tours down to Kentucky where it was very popular to build with ICF and took the architect with us. And they were sold. After seeing it, they're like, no, we can do this. Now, wait a minute. Now, yeah. I'm, think I'm thinking like a school board member or the general public. You're going to want me to fund the building that you're making with foam? Yeah. I mean, it, that had so, to be a challenge in itself. With school board members, it wasn't. We do have a really? couple We do have a couple contractors on our school board, and the cost was cheaper, slightly cheaper, and the time frame was shorter. You can build faster with ICF than you can ah. precast. Precast, it's like a 12 to 18-month turnaround, waiting on those panels to come in. ICF, it wasn't. ICF concrete locally sourced. So it's something that's, as long as we get the styrofoam box on site, we can build. So uh, pretty exciting. So that was the easy part yeah. of selling that helped you get. Yeah. Reduced cost, reduced time frame, and it was a great product. It was no brainer for us. Okay. So we're given all the reasons why they should talk to you. How do they get in touch with you and go see Tom? Yeah. Give us contact, Merrimack Valley R3 School District. Best number to call be our office number. 636-271-1400. Again, that's 636-271-1400. Be glad to show you around.